Hey guys, it's your internet bestie, Noelle Blue, and this is going to be a quick get ready with me book update where I actually do a mashup between Dorothy Must Die and Wicked. That's right, we're going to Oz, bitches. <laughs> Wicked, um, it's a Broadway musical, it's going to be a movie, Cynthia Erivo is going to be reprising the role as Elphaba, um, Ariana Grande is going to be Glinda the Good Witch. I don't really know how I feel about that because I haven't seen Ariana Grande act in anything seriously. I've only ever seen her do Nickelodeon shows. So hopefully she's good in it. Um, and we are matching up Wicked against Dorothy Must Die. This has been my October read. I am still trying to finish it. I am literally on page 390. Exactly, 390 out of 400 or so, 450 or so pages. Um, both of these are trilogies, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the Wicked Years is the series for Wicked. It's by Gregory Maguire. And Dorothy Must Die is just, that's the title of the series. And just go to Dorothy Must Die. And this is actually written by Danielle M. Page. Um, if you need more motivation, I believe that Danielle M. Page is a melanated author and Gregory Maguire does some of your favorite fairy tale retellings. So it really just depends on what you're into. I'm into magical retellings. I absolutely love that both of these books talk about The Wizard of Oz. It is one of my favorite movies as a child and seeing how they've turned the world of Oz upside down in two very different ways has got me invested. Um, I finished reading Wicked back in 2015. Did a review for it, went back and read the review because I'm doing a books and looks coming up soon. And I don't like my review anymore. So I'm going to re-review it. <laughs> I'm going to redo it. Um, probably after I do the review for Dorothy Must Die, if I'm being honest. So get ready with me while we talk about the wonderful land of Oz. All right, guys. So as always, if you're new, thank you for coming to my channel. If you're not, welcome back, boo. Uh, we're just, you know, it's these get ready with me. They're so informal. <laughs> just, I just be in here doing stuff and y'all just be in here watching. So there we go. Um, so... I have been working on this, been working my way through Dorothy Must Die, and I gotta say, having read Wicked, I actually uh, feel like I might like Dorothy Must Die a little bit more. Um, I liked Wicked. One of my favorite parts about Wicked was actually that it gave a more humane aspect to the Wicked Witch, as you know, in The Wizard of Oz, she's the villain, and we need to douse her with water, and she will go away. And in Wicked, we got to see that the main character, Elphaba, was a social justice warrior before social justice warriors were a thing. So she was like the Green Lives Matter of Oz. Um, but she also believed in animal rights. Not like our animals were like, you shouldn't do animal testing. Their animals could talk and were like fully formed beings and people treated them weirdly because of that. Um, and she was like, no, leave the flying monkeys alone. Yeah. Um, plus, Alphabet has like a secret love baby, which threw me at the end of the book. Like, ah, um, yeah. I read somewhere that the guy, her baby daddy, are we gonna call him that? We won't call him that for now. Um, her baby daddy, who she does not tell she is pregnant, by the way. Um, she kind of goes and joins a convent, suffers in silence, gives birth, raises him all by herself. And then he ends up spending the entire sequel called Son of a Witch. He spends the entire sequel trying to find his half sister because she wanted to be a messy box, but whatever. Anyway, so. Uh, her baby daddy is a prince of the Winkies or Gilligans. It's a bunch of different races of Ozians. Is that what we're gonna call them? We're gonna call them Ozians. An entire different race of Ozians, and they are kind. Of, it's kind of classist, if we're being honest. So like the Gilligan people um, treat the Munchkin Landers differently, treat the Quadlings differently. If you don't recognize any of these entities, it's because you've never picked up a Wizard of Oz anything. Um, and that's okay, because that's why you watch, because I have. Um, so in Wicked, um, the Wicked Witch of the West is basically wicked because instead of her, you know, going down the path that she's supposed, not supposed to be, but instead of her going down the path that all the other trained witches are going down, um, like her sister Nessa Rose, for example, or Galinda, who's G-A-L-I-N-D-A, not Glinda, but Galinda, right, her, um, they're weird friends, um, kind of frenemies actually friends they both like the same guy at one point we're not going to talk about who that is read the book 
not spoiling everything for you but um that happens she ends up you know actually helping her um Linda ends up helping Elphaba at some point because she understands her plight and yeah uh, that basically happens and the book ends with Dorothy splashing water on the Wicked Witch of the West and it's really to get the silver shoes so not the ruby slippers the silver ones that Elphaba had the wizard in Wicked is super weird he's kind of a villain but also kind of ambivalent about everything he just he's very self-serving um he doesn't really do anything to help but a lot of the things he's doing are hurting the Ozians um they it's weird. They have a weird kind of Christianity in the book. Um, they keep mentioning and referencing an unnamed God. Um, and he is the reason why things are happening. And while I was reading that as a Christian, um, I get it. <laughs> that is their explanation for it. And if you believe in that, then that's great. And for those who didn't believe in that, that's kind of how the revolution started, I suppose. Um, the reason why I think I might like Dorothy Must Die more is because it is less of a political thriller, I suppose. Like if I had to take all the magic Ooh. I had to take all the magic out of Wicked and it's not really that hard to do because there's very little magic in there to begin with um, but if I had to take all the magic out of Wicked and just tell you about the story it's really a political drama based on the fact that this young woman is born different with a weird ass allergy and she has to go through her life being different and not being able to conceal the fact that she's different and all the adversity that she faces to triumph over these people who are really being a-holes to her and lots of other people so in real 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 life I guess that Elphaba's black in the 1960s and that's Oz and that's that but Dorothy Must Die purely magical speculation um it's more of an espionage thriller um because Amy Gunn also from Kansas a trailer park in Kansas not to be confused with Dorothy's Kansas Amy Gunn from Kansas also gets swept up in a tornado and when she arrives in Oz she finds out that not only did Dorothy make it back over the rainbow but she is a magical hoarding hole drilling terrifying creature who's usurped the throne of Oz and is just being a real witch you know um this book I find interesting and fascinating because we're in Wicked we kind of learned that we call the Wicked Witch Wicked because of all the terrible things she did but in real life the character of Elphaba is actually a good person who is trying to help in Dorothy Must Die they play with the concept of good and evil what's wicked what's not and all that good shiz um collectively as a whole to really keep you on your toes what is wicked and what is not in a world where oof, did that got put in the primer on in a world where up is down down is up red means go uh, green means stop and literally you could be murdered simply for looking with your eyeball in the wrong direction um all the magic is being siphoned from this world and it's up to amy and the order of the wicked to stop her now i did not make it to the end of the book yet and obviously if i haven't made it to the end of the book i have not made it to the end of the series but where i am in the story is one i'm super invested because i just got to know do we kill dorothy is that what's going to take the other three books do we kill dorothy in the third book do we just kill her now probably not i feel like they should kill her in this one and then <laughs> that sounds so horrible <laughs> i feel like they should offer <laughs> i feel like they should kill her in this one and then show the aftermath in the rest of the books but um if i had to wager a guess they are going to drag this out till the end and we will not be killing dorothy in this book because although she is well the, the part i just read says that she is super weak she's being attacked from all sides and doesn't even know it and this is pete one of the characters this is his only time to flee the palace um before dorothy kind of realizes what's going on and starts on the offensive and so he takes Amy, who at this point is in a disguise as one of the palace maids. He takes Amy and leads her into the center of the maze at uh, the Emerald City's palace. He takes her there and he introduces her to the maze because the maze is a living, breathing entity. Like most things are in Oz, the plants are alive, they have teeth, they eat people. The maze is a living, breathing entity. The scarecrow, which is not uh, Fiero from Wicked, different person altogether, this scarecrow, uh, Ha, this scarecrow does experiments on people and he basically cuts open their brains in an attempt to steal their brains <laughs> because this scarecrow wants to be the smartest of all the smart people and the tin man he also does experiments on people but he turns people into tin soldiers so if you lose an arm he will replace your arm with a metal knife and if you use your leg then he will replace your leg with a metal leg which is possibly a bicycle wheel and if you lose a part of your stomach, then he will use a muffler and stick that there. And basically, he turns people into cyborgs, but without, like, all the electrical components and the cool stuff, he just, he just turn y'all, most of y'all against y'all will, actually. 
Um, so basically, whatever, whatever the other two do to you, be it the scarecrow stealing your brains or the cowardly lion who isn't so cowardly um, mauling you, because that happened in the book. He um, mauled the poor girl. And uh, basically, they told her, it's great. You know, once you heal from your wounds, we can send you down to the Tin Woodsman and he will fix you right on up. So that's great. I got to be mauled by that guy and then I get to be mutilated by that guy. But my point is that the story itself is a lot more fascinating. It's a lot more twisted. I like a good twisted dark story and this book just gives it to you in spades. Now Gregory Maguire does do adult fairy tale retelling but he does it very well. Um, I love Mason Gregory Maguire. He has actually been some of my favorite reads but I gotta give it to Danielle Page because she actually did a really good job on this one. Now it does read like a YA. I'm not gonna hold you. There are parts of the story where it's like why is this even a part of the overall narrative? For example, um, she is training to assassinate Dorothy because Dorothy must die. That's what they said the whole book. Um, Dorothy must die and we gonna be the ones to kill her. Now she's doing this, but as she's doing this, she starts falling for one of the guys who is training her. And that's why I don't like YA so much because y'all pick the most interesting times that have people's feelings and emotions get involved in things. We are at war. We are at war, we are fighting. There are magical beings. There's a lion that sucks out your fear and consumes it and turns you into a wrinkly old person while people devour your body. There's a tins woodman turning people into cyborgs and a scarecrow stealing people's brains. And now you want to give him a kiss? Okay. All right. I get it. I guess. I mean, if it's the last time I'm going to see you. But also, is this the last time I'm going to see you? Because it's three more. It's some, it's some more books. Okay. So. Yep. Yeah. So have you guys read either book? Have you guys read Dorothy Must Die? Did you finish the series? Did you read Wicked? Did you know that was a series? Have you finished the series? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I personally, like I said, right now I'm leaning towards Danielle Page's Dorothy Must Die for the better of the two. Um, in regards to the depictions of the world, I'm going to say that you get more of a geography of Oz by reading the Wicked series. Um, because they were actually able to, because they showed you how the Wicked Witch grew up in Oz, they were able to literally show you the gradual progression of Oz and, and how it became what it is now. Um, and Dorothy Must Die just because she, she got there after everything had already happened and there's a lot of running involved. Um, running and fighting. They run and they fight a lot um, because Dorothy is evil and that is what must happen. Um, you have to fight her or she will kill you. Um, well, not her specifically. Dorothy will get her hands dirty but also doesn't like to get her hands dirty. Um, but for like the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion and the Tin Woodsmen, they absolutely will fight you and you better be ready and you better know how to fight because they are not playing. And their little Tin Woodsmen soldiers and the Scarecrow's crows and the Cowardly Lion has a whole menagerie of evil villain animals. Like, you know how he was a punk in Wizard of Oz? Well, apparently in this one, his magical power, instead of just fighting courage, was to siphon the fear from other people. And in doing so, you have no more fear. But also, he lets you get eaten by the hungry animals who now listen to him. Because, of course, why would he not? Why would he not let you be eaten? Yeah. This book is twisted in so many ways. I love it. I do love, like I said, I love me a good dark twisted story. Um, I do lean to the side of gory and horror when I can get it. Um, this is a great combination of all of those things actually. You get the fairy tale aspect because this is clearly the Oz from the Wizard of Oz with the similar characters. There's mention of you know the woodsman and the lion and even Toto the dog is in here and even Toto the dog is an a-hole in this series which I love because isn't that great like everybody who you thought was a good guy is like horrible Glinda's evil the munchkins are you know being slaughtered uh, basically everybody's being slaughtered the only spot that is safe which I think is interesting they do mention some of the same geography between the two books um Gilligan country is still safe there and that is where the order of the wicked is hiding in a cave um so they basically at this point have Amy um posing as one of the maids for the palace and she just in there hiding in plain sight um they have flying monkeys as well so Whereas Wicked, you know, Elphaba was trying to free the flying monkeys and Dorothy must die, the flying monkeys free are freeing themselves. They separated into two groups, the wingless and the ones with wings. I think they call them the winged ones. And the winged ones, because they still have their wings, are magical and the magic is tied to Dorothy. The wingless ones, basically, the only way to free yourself from Dorothy's wrath, if you are a flying monkey, is to chop your wings off and run and live in the woods like a real ass monkey. So they did. Most of them flee into the woods like real monkeys, never to be seen or heard from again because why would you ever tell you a hiding spot if you was trying to get away from Dorothy? Um, but in the same instance, uh, in doing so, you are sacrificing that which you were born with and which is such a major part of your life. So it's a crucial decision for a lot of these beings and a lot of the monkeys are not down to chop their wings off because that hurts. Yeah, so they don't. Um, and they live in servitude of Dorothy. But uh, there are a few of them who fight back and they absolutely do run away from Dorothy and Dorothy don't like that too much and it kind of just is what it is. So 
that's where I am in the stories right now. Uh, Dorothy must die. Now oh, I see what happened. Um, Dorothy must die. Almost done. Almost done. Not quite done yet, but almost. Um, Wicked definitely finished that already. There is a review up on the bloomfiction.wordpress.com blog if you are interested in that. Um, yeah, y'all know I can't do eyeliner and talk at the same time, so give me a few more seconds. I'll do it off camera. Be right back. All right, so I actually forgot where I was and things because it takes so long for me to get this shade and the shadows and things correctly. But uh, Wicked versus Dorothy Must Die. We're still in the middle of that. We're in Oz, bitches. Um, so you gotta pick your side, basically. Do you support the order of the Wicked or are you down for the resistance? Because either way, people are doing some shadow craft in both of these books. You know, regimes must be overturned in both of these books. Somebody's gotta die. I mean, in Wicked, we kind of know who's gotta go because she dies in the beginning and then they go in the, in the past. And I guess we kind of know who has to die. Dorothy must die because in the title, it's Dorothy must die, so. But how we get there, how we get there is the important part of the journey. And right now we're just with Amy waiting to see how she gets there. Cause right now she's sitting in the middle of, a, well, on the page I'm on, she's sitting in the middle of a hedge maze being confused as to where Pete's going. Cause Pete, where are you going? Pete's always kind of coming on as he pleased. And now he's going and he's not coming back. And she's sad about that, but also kind of annoyed because Pete's been running in and out since the beginning of the book. He actually saved her in the beginning of the book. So she can't question him too much, but she started to question him because why don't you never tell me nothing? And are we in this together? She actually thought for a second that he might've been her handler. I will say that Dorothy Must Die is giving all types of CIA realness um, in regards to its espionage and its uh, secret keeping. Ooh. So I gotta tell you guys, I did not expect this color of glitter. Um, I like glitter as much as the next girl does. I'm lying to you guys. I don't like glitter nearly as much as the next girl does. Um, I know some glittery people. I know some glittery people. Um, not me so much, um, but I really like this glitter right here um, on this palette. It is actually called Wise, as in it would be wise not to get glitter in your eye, which is why I don't usually use glitter, because that's exactly where it goes. As soon as you put it on your eyelid, it falls off this little tiny brush and goes right into your cornea and then scratches up your cornea and then you're blind. But right now it's giving me sparkly butterfly on either side of my nose and I'm here for it. Yeah, just gonna be here for it. If you guys could see what I'm seeing off camera, you would also be here for it. <laughs> this, this is what we do now. Glitter all the way. We're glittering now. Um, so I'm gonna use Wise, and I think I'm done with it actually. And then I am going to do, this last color is called Reflect. And I'm only telling you this guys because I called it Bubblegum Vomit. You will see why in a few seconds. But it is actually called Wise. No, it is actually called Reflect. As in, it's going to reflect the hell out of some light. Um, but this is why I call it bubblegum vomit. You see this here? Because it's, it's like a hot bubblegum pink and it's sparkly. And this look that I'm doing with you guys is inspired by the Dorothy and the Dorothy Must Die book. And she is all about her bubblegum vomit. Everything is pink. There's another character in the book called Madison Pendleton and she wears hot pinks and glitter and gives you very much trailer trash. And she's a senior in high school and has a bun and got into a fight with Amy the first couple of pages. And Amy got in trouble for not punching a pregnant girl. That happened. Even though the pregnant girl instigated it, I am not advocating violence against pregnant people. Um, I will say your face is not pregnant, but also, also don't punch pregnant people because it's not nice. Don't punch anyone because that's not nice either. I tell YouTube that these videos are not for children and then just in case children are watching it because we're talking about books, be kind to everyone. All right, so we're gonna try some of this bubblegum vomit on my eyelid. Again, it's called Reflect. I just, I don't know what else, I'm just gonna keep calling it what I'm calling it. Um, reflect though, is kind of hard to get all onto the brush. I've gotta be honest. Um, blogging updates. Um, since we're kind of at the end of Oz versus Oz here, uh, blog updates. I'm shooting more books and looks. Those are coming soon. If you have not already checked out our most recent episodes, please do. We have three full episodes up. They are Fledgling uh, by Octavia Butler, Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. And I just did The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And if you've been following me on any of my social media platforms, I'm sure you are sick to death of that cover and me in that green jumper. And if you're not, keep looking because I also retouched the background. When I say I retouched the background, I mean I gave it to my sissy and she retouched the background. So you're getting like three to five more pictures of me in that green jumpsuit, but with like a different background. Boom, you're welcome. So still trying to get this reflect, to reflect on my eyelid. And uh, gotta say, definitely was feeling the whys a little bit more. Okay. So yes, uh, what did I say? Like, subscribe, do all the likey, subscribe things if you haven't already. Um, head over to the bluemoonfiction.wordpress.com blog if you haven't already. Um, if you guys haven't guessed by now, this look has so much glitter in it. It's so glittery. Way more glitter than I've ever worn in my life. I feel low-key like a stripper. Do they wear lots of glitter? Not a stripper, I don't know. 
feel like they wear a lot of glitter. This would be perfect for your exotic dancer needs. This eyeshadow palette <laughs> has all of the all of the sparkly things that you guys could ever want. Um, not, I mean, it's a respectable profession. I couldn't do it, so someone has to, right? Boom. People couldn't sit here and talk to strangers online, but that's what I'm here for. So, boom. Um, pretty much done for the night. <laughs> Gotta be honest. <laughs> this took so long. I am actually ready to go to sleep. Um, but <coughs> this whole thing was, I get ready with me. <laughs> so that means after this, we still have to go outside. Yay. And yay, we get to go outside. So much glitter. All right. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So yeah, that's, that's where we are with things. Like I said, um, liking, subscribing, pick your, I'm going to have a poll. I'm going to, I'm going to have a poll on the social medias to kind of discuss with you all, um, one, if you've read either book, because that matters um, to me, but also, also, um, are you team uh, Wicked or team Dorothy? <laughs> team Dorothy Must Die. Um, which one was your favorite? Uh, which one did you not read yet? Did you not read either one of them? Um, there's no way I'm getting out of this particular look without some kind of shimmery shining. Um, I'm sparkling like the Tin Man right now, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you guys for spending the time hanging out with me while I did this to myself on purpose. <laughs> As always, guys, I would be nowhere without you. So, yeah. And yeah, we are. Boom. Yes, I sure can subscribe to your channel. Random name that popped up on the screen out of nowhere. Like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to finish this up real quick because, again, I'm ready now. I don't know what I'm ready for. Which I'm ready to go out into a blackout. <laughs> you can see me from space. That's what I'm ready for. Um, I am Dorothy. If this is any indication of what happened, this is why she went crazy. She came back, um, got her magic on, realized that all of this glitter was too effing much and went nuts. So, yep. Um, just to seal the deal with how insane we're being, because why not? Um, just to seal the deal with how insane we're being, we're going for the brightest shades of pink anyone has ever seen. Yep. So we're doing super bubblegum baby pink, which is this. This is super bubblegum baby pink. Um, quick trick for you guys. This is the color that I paint my lips when I am like when I have a busted lip and I get allergies really bad, so my lips dry out, bleed, crack, it's really crazy. Um, I paint my lips this color so that when I blot it all off, it looks normal same color. And that's what we're doing right now. We're gonna wipe all that shiz off because we look crazy, right? <laughs> so now it looks like a normal relaxed color, right? And then I go with my curl, coral. I think that's what this color is. It doesn't say it's that old. The name is gone. But uh, we go on with the coral, right? Which is also a pink with like a little bit of a peachy to it, right? Really blind with this because brightness is clearly what this look screams. It screams, do you see me yet? If you don't, damn it. I don't see how you couldn't. I'm here. So here. So bright. So bright. Yep, but after we go in with the coral and then wipe some of that off, go in with, I don't, I think this is, oh no, look, it actually tells you this is brazen berry. Raisin berry is going to darken this up so that we don't look as crazy because we look crazy, right? Yeah, a little bit of berry in there for you. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. And if you didn't feel like enough of a triple X model yet, <laughs> oh wait, no, there's more. There's some rose for you because that rose, baby, is going to make all of this look so much darker than God. Okay. Um, I don't understand how, I mean, I do. There are people in this world who are pink people not one of those people it drives me insane it's such a bright frilly frou -frou girly color um i like pink tops yep and then last but not least a normal ass color nope still too bright still so bright so bright all of the brightness all right so i gotta do <laughs> i pray for days like this going in with the red because lord knows that'll darken it up yes it will you'll be a normal living human color now. Yep. It's still so bright. I don't think there's anything we could ever do to darken this. We could drink some vampire's blood. That'll darken it. Oh no, if you add enough of this super deep burgundy red, it does eventually turn it into like a mauve. All right, guys, you see what's happening. I'm gonna pause this, blend all of these weird colors together and then come back in a minute. So I blended and because Reflect is so reflective, we're just gonna dab some of that. Of course, that one little piece would like clump up and be extra. 
that one little piece. We be getting banging on these eyeshadow pieces. Yeah. Clearly y'all wanna fight. It shows violence, not me, just so you know. All right, so it's a little sparkly, Reflect is still doing its reflective thing, which is almost not at all. Um, definitely love wise, probably should have stuck wise there. Let me see, right, see, wise. Wise is where it's at, guys. If you want some sparkly shiz, go for the wise because it'll give you sparkle. I don't even like all this sparkly, but I do like it on my lips and I prefer the wise sparkly to the reflex clumpiness of it all, really. Boom, all right, so here is my quick Dorothy inspired look. As always, guys, all of this is just so I can go take some pictures of some books. Y'all already know this is what this is for because we do books and looks when we do the book reviews. So this is obviously gonna be for all of my other book posts. And I just wanna thank you so much for taking your time and hanging out with me while I got my whole life together because as we all know, it's, it's never together. All right, guys, well, this is it. And like I said before, be sure to head over to the bloomingfiction.wordpress.com blog if you have not caught up on the books and looks or the in real lives, um, because those are up there already. I also did a couple of things different with the website itself. So if you are looking for book tags, if you're looking for my other reads, um, which are book lists to add to your TBR, um, if you're looking for our fur watchers list, which is for our friends who do like to enjoy the fiction and the fantasy of it all, but really hate reading, we're sad, but it's okay because that's why people make movies out of the books that we love so much. So definitely head over there and check those out. Be sure to follow me on all of the social medias at Noel Blue. Don't forget to also follow the Blue Moon Fiction page. If you were looking for me and you cannot find me, that's because you put an E in Blue Moon and there is no E in Blue. All right, so I will see you guys next time, probably on a Books and Looks. I'll be doing Wicked! I can't wait! All right, guys, bye!